So on a lovely sunny day here at the National Astronomy Meeting and a lot of the discussion this morning has been about exoplanets and in particular climate modelling and David Aikerman is here to tell us a little bit more about that. Well many of the planets that we find outside our own solar system are what we call hot Jupiters. So these planets have a mass similar to Jupiter in our own solar system but they're very close to their host star. What this does is it means the planet is uh, phase locked, so there's one side which is in permanent daytime and another side that's in permanent nighttime. Consequently, there's a very large temperature dif difference between the day side and night side, and this causes very high speed winds to flow up to a few thousand kilometres per second. One of the things that we're interested in studying is how those winds redistribute heat around the planet. This is interesting because it affects what the observers see when they observe these planets and it's something we definitely need to understand. There's also an interesting puzzle relating to heat transport in these planets. When we look at the size of the planets, which you can determine from observations, many of the hot Jupiters are larger than we would predict. It's thought that this is to do with the distribution of heat in the planet which causes the atmosphere to become inflated. It's not really understood exactly what the mechanism is, so we hope that by using the climate and uh, weather model that the MESS office has uh, uh, produced, that we can gain a much better understanding of how these inflated hot Jupiter planets arise. Another aspect which we're interested in studying is clouds, haze and dust. Although we have clouds on Earth, when you look at exoplanets, there are also clouds, but they're made from some quite exotic substances. So you might have clouds of uh, titanium oxide in the atmosphere of your exoplanet. And although this is quite different to clouds on Earth, we can translate a lot of the physics that's used in the, in the Earth modelling to our exoplanets. And hopefully we can bring some of that understanding of the exoplanets back to inform understanding of how clouds on Earth work. The final thing which we're hoping to look at in future is the area of biosignatures. So if you look at the atmosphere of a planet and you see oxygen, and you see methane, and you see water, that's a really good indication that there's life on that planet. If there wasn't any life, then the oxygen would disappear over the course of about a million years. If you see oxygen in that planet's atmosphere, it's telling you that something's producing it. That could be photosynthesis, for example, and it's a signpost to tell you that there, that there could well be life on that planet. And with such a wide range of, uh, of exoplanets and with all the different characteristics they've got, how difficult is it to make sort of one unified model that you can sort of just apply to, to exoplanets in general? A lot of the underlying physics of planets is remarkably similar, even if it's the Earth or a hot, hot Jupiter. So we can take the model and by setting different parameters we can look at different types of planets because what goes on in terms of the physics is surprisingly similar sometimes. So could one day we uh, see not only uh, weather forecasts on the TV for Earth but also for other exoplanets around the, around the universe? <laughs> <laughs> Can't see Michael Fish predicting hurricanes on exoplanets uh, any time soon but hopefully we'll, ha we'll have some idea about what we're seeing when the observers manage to, uh, detect the, uh, manage to uh, observe these objects in detail.